My name is Richard Coles. I'll be talking to you about managing armored scales in Christmas trees. This is the first in a series of videos. Other videos in this series discuss chemical control for armored scales and best management practices. In this presentation, I'll discuss basic biology of scales, describe why they are so difficult to control in Christmas trees, and also cover some of the cultural practices, that is, planting Christmas trees and their care. Any species of conifer is susceptible to some species of armored scales. For example, elongate hemlock scale feed on true firs, Douglas firs, and spruces. Cryptomeria scale feeds on true firs and spruces, and hemlock scales can infest spruces. I have not pictured, nor will I be talking about, pine scales. There are several features in common among these scales. First of all, they're all sucking insects. As they feed, they inject toxic saliva back into the plant, rather than producing honeydew. They feed on the undersurface of needles, which makes them very difficult to contact with various insecticides. They have two generations per year. They are both males and females, but only adult males can fly. They have one pair of wings. This leaves nymphs, newly hatched from eggs, called crawlers, as the only stage that can disperse from one plant to another. Crawlers can blow on the breezes, and when they land on a susceptible plant, they settle onto the needle and insert themselves under the waxy cuticle. There are several reasons why armored scales make IPM difficult in Christmas tree plantings. First of all, nearly all other insect and mite pests can be managed with various selective insecticides or miticides, whereas this isn't necessarily true with armored scales. Armored scales can completely destroy the value of a tree by destroying its aesthetics, and so they have to be controlled. Now, if non-selective scale insecticides are used, they will kill beneficial predators of aphid and mite pests and can cause secondary outbreaks of those pests. These Fraser firs were heavily infested with both elongate hemlock scale and cryptomeria scale. The trees on the left of the image were still heavily infested. The needles were yellow and interior needles were shedding. Trees on the right were protected with insecticide. There are several aspects of growing and harvesting trees that can make armored scales much less of a problem. Because scales disperse from infested plants to uninfested, if you plant small, clean trees among large trees with scales, those small trees will soon have a scale problem, which will only get worse as they grow larger. So, a word of advice, don't replant in heavily infested blocks. This can be a challenge for traditional choose and cut growers. Rather, you should clear cut blocks so that you can start with a clean slate. Another idea, if you have large infested trees, is to sell them as soon as you can. Don't let them get too large and have more and more of a problem. I will now go over some of the characteristics of species that are found on true firs. Elongate hemlock scale, as the name suggests, has a long body shape. The females have a reddish-brown color and are almost rectangular. The males are a different shape and are white. One of their distinctive characteristics is that males produce a white woolly wax material which rubs off on and gives a powdery gray appearance to surrounding foliage. You can see from left to right an adult female, a scale crawler that's just settling and inserting itself under the cuticle of the needle, a couple of freshly settled nymphs, and on the right, male scales. One of the objectionable features of elongate hemlock scale is the wool which rubs off onto surrounding foliage and leaves a gray residue. Growers sometimes think that they're fighting adelgids because of that wool. However, the fact that the males produce the wool provides an opportunity to tell whether the scales are alive or dead. What you can do is cut off an infested branch during the winter, stick the cut end into water, and leave it in a still, warm place for a week or two to see if the wool starts growing out from the scales. Cryptomeria scale has a round or oval shape and is distinctive for its translucent scale cover with a round yellow spot or nipple at the center. You can look through the scale cover to observe the yellow scale body underneath. This has given it the nickname the fried egg scale. For any armored scales, 
You can take a sharp pin and lift the cover of the scale to see if scale body underneath, which is not directly attached to the test, or scale cover. It seems like the smallest amount of feeding from cryptomeria scale will cause discoloration of the needle. Starting with a yellow spot and progressing to white and brown, eventually the needles may even fall off from the tree. Cryptomeria scale seems to build up to much higher populations than elongate hemlock scale, where we might find up to about 8 scales per needle with elongate hemlock scale. We can find upwards of 10 times that many with cryptomeria scale. Here we see them packed in standing room only on the undersides of fir needles. Controlling armored scales with insecticides will be the focus of other videos. However, there are three basic strategies for chemical control of scales, one of which is to use dormant oil. Another is to target crawlers by leaving deposits of insecticides on the plant surfaces so that the crawlers that are moving on those surfaces will pick up a lethal dose of insecticides. And the third is to use systemic insecticides, which by their nature get to the inside of plant tissues and kill the scales as they feed. In all cases, it will be really important to choose insecticides that will kill the scales without causing great harm to the various insects that feed on scales. By choosing insecticides that selectively kill scales, we might be able to achieve integrated pest management. There are several species of insects that feed on scales, and if we were to protect these, they can help to maintain low population densities of scales. I've pictured here the twice stabbed lady beetle, the adult on the left, and the larva on the right. Both stages feed on armored scales. This is a large black lady beetle with two red spots. Cybocephalus neponicus is a tiny beetle imported from Asia for biological control of euonymus scale. The males and females have different coloring. Cybocephalus is about the same size as Microesia species lady beetles which probably don't feed much on scales. Rather, they are known to be mite predators. The image on the left and right compare where predators had not been active on the left versus where they had on the right. When predators feed on scales, they leave behind fragments of the scale cover or will remove the scale completely from the needle. Since the scale is underneath the waxy cuticle, this leaves round tracks of where the scale had previously been. One way you can check to see how important predators are in your plantings is to use beating methods. You can either use a commercially available beating sheet, which I'm displaying here, together with any convenient stick to beat the foliage, or you can use a common expedient which is a clipboard and some sheets of white paper. This is very useful for monitoring balsam twig aphid and mites too. Last but not least in importance is Encarcia citrina, a tiny parasitic wasp. The wasp will lay her egg right into the body of a developing scale. The wasp larva grows within the scale, pupates, and when it transforms to an adult wasp, cuts a neat circular hole through the scale cover to emerge. You can see the degree of parasitism by observing the proportion of scales with these circular exit holes, either with a good hand lens or a dissecting microscope. This completes the first video segment on managing armored scales in Christmas tree plantings. I would like to thank the Northeast Regional IPM program for providing funding for this project.